Hi, my name is George Durkee, and I'm adjunct instructor for GIS and Emergency Services at Columbia College in Sonora, California. We offer several classes in using GIS and search and rescue, emergency services, as well as in developing a basic understanding of GIS so you can effectively use it in your day-to-day -day operations. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate using ARC GIS Explorer desktop to plan and create a basic map for a hasty search. ARC Explorer is a free and easy to use software program that can be used by most any member of your SAR team. It's got two advantages. You can use maps from your hard drive or a thumb drive, so it doesn't need to be connected to the internet. And you can import directly into ARC GIS 10, so if the search ramps up and you call in a GIS specialist, you've captured the initial geospatial information from the search, and it can then be easily imported into more advanced software. In the field, it's fairly easy to provide enough power for a laptop and printer so you can run the initial part of a search or any other incident requiring a map from a remote initial planning point using a 12-volt power source on your vehicle or a small generator. The idea of this demo is to show how quickly you can create search segments, assign teams, and print maps to get your teams out the door and looking for the missing person as quickly as possible. Here, we'll do that in about 15 minutes. For details on assembling a data set of maps, see the other videos in the series. Read our free PDF text using GIS for Wildland Search and Rescue, or take my fully online class offered at Columbia College, GIS and Making Maps. Okay, I'll start from the world view of the ARC GIS Explorer imagery map from their online base map set. I'm going to create a search in Little Yosemite Valley in the backcountry of Yosemite National Park. Let's start the timer and see how quickly a hasty search can be done. First, I'll add one of the 125k maps for Yosemite. That's mostly for the overall view of the park. This is also going to be a little slow because my video capture is slowing down the processor a bit. They load faster than this usually. For better detail, I'll load the Half Dome and Merced Peak 24K quads for the primary search area. In this case, I know which quads I need, but one of my other video shows you how to load the quad index for California and find the map quads you need from that. A little like watching paint dry, but stay with us here. Okay. One of the add-ins I have is a tool that can zoom to set map scale. 1 to 24K is the scale of the map and what we're used to when looking at a paper map, so I'll set it to that. Now I'll move the map to the primary search area and establish the point last seen from the initial report by the parents of Tiny Timmy, who were all hiking to Half Dome. To establish the PLS, I'm using another tool developed specifically for SAR by Tuolumne County Search and Rescue. This automatically creates a timestamp and location in decimal degrees in the note section of the label. Fill in the label title and some basic information, which now becomes a permanent part of the record. And just to add a sense of urgency here, let's make Timmy a insulin-dependent diabetic.
Next, uh, we'll establish a command post. I've also customized Arc Explorer with some standardized SAR symbols, and we'll change the Tuolumne tool symbols to more universally recognized choices. Now let's draw some hasty search segments and assign teams. For the first one, I'll send a Blitz team to cover the trail to Half Dome Summit. In the notes, I'll tell them, tell the team to talk to other hikers and get their contact information for later interviews by investigations. And Timmy could have missed the Half Dome Trail at the Clouds Rest Junction, so we'll tend to send another team that direction. And yet another possibility is that Timmy missed the trail entirely and is wandering around in the dense forest uh, near Lost Lake. So for that I'll draw a polygon for an entire, for an area search and extend it through most of Little Yosemite Valley north of the river. And last, I'll draw a segment to search the river itself and check strainers uh, and tracks on the banks. And remember, this is a hasty search and available teams are usually limited, so this will be our basic blitz effort. Also note that the drawings aren't going to be especially precise and will require at least a little interpolation from your teams, but certainly close enough for navigation and understanding.
And next, I'll clean up the graphics a little so each segment is more easily distinguished from the other. And I'll mention that one thing I'm not doing in the video, because I forgot, is uh, to save your uh, work early and often. And now, We'll bring up the notes and labels for each assignment, lock them on the map, and arrange them for printing the team maps. Clicking on the pin locks it open, and you can move it where you want. Note that the symbol color and shape shows in the upper left of the note box. From the table of contents, activating the label checkbox will make the label title show permanently above the feature itself. And I'll minimize the tool ribbon to give the maps more real estate. And now I'll capture the map using the Windows print screen function. There's a known glitch with ArcGIS Explorer desktop, or if you go to print the map using the Arc Explorer print function, it won't show the labels and map tips sometimes. Some machines do fine, others don't, and the reason is not known. So anyway, I use the screen capture function, which I'll now paste into a Word document. And uh, this will be most effective in landscape mode. And I'll use uh, legal size uh, paper. And for this demo, my screen capture took a screenshot of both of my monitors. So I'll use the cropping function of Word to get rid of the right-hand screen shot. If I can find the crop function, here we go. And now locate the map or the map where you want it on the on the page and the size you want. Once again, this is a quick map for hasty search teams and shouldn't be dependent on for actual ground navigation, but just to give teams their assignment information and roughly where they should go. And with Word, you can also insert a header to put in necessary information, such as the search name, operational period, uh, description, weather, safety, messages, and etc.
as we all know, on a real search, I'd type much, much faster, and everything would make sense the first time. And so there you go. Even with my more than occasional fumbles doing this demo, it's about 16 minutes to load the maps you need, create search segments, assign teams, and get to the point where you can print a fairly good topo map for each team, and all without the need to be connected to the internet. You've also started the geospatial record for this incident. Depending on how much time you have, you can also establish points and descriptions of trail blocks, clues, hellespots, etc. The Tuolumne tool set also includes a tool that can be used by ArcGIS 10 that will import the segments and clean up the labels so they can be easily copied and pasted into Mapsar should the search be ramped up. A few hours of training and practice will get you or your teammates to achieve this level of proficiency. I strongly recommend, though, that you take a couple of days of gaining a basic understanding of coordinate systems, file structures, naming conventions, GPS and other subjects critical to understanding and effectively using GIS in your organization. And last, I want to quickly show another terrific feature of ArcGIS Explorer Desktop. It's got a great 3D imaging graphics capability. This can be used to show IC staff the difficulty of terrain, or show responding aircraft an aerial view of a cross-country route, or even to show ground teams the best route over a pass. Okay, thanks for watching. You can contact me for any questions on GIS, other resources, or classes offered at Columbia.